All right, and welcome to the movie poster number two video. And in this tutorial, we are going to create the movie poster that you see on the screen right now. Now, this is not a real movie or anything like that. This is just all fictitious names. But I wanted to sort of use some of the same techniques that they really use on, on movie posters. So it would just be a little bit more fun. Now, originally, I was just going to have this tutorial on how to show how to make these light beams coming out of the house. And this was just going to be a separate tutorial on the DVD. But I decided to go ahead and create this big movie poster project all together so we can do all these different types of masking techniques and just make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun. I'm going to go over to the file browser or the Adobe Bridge and let's take a look at the images that we will be using for this tutorial. And you can see this is the image of the forest that is on the movie poster. And you can see the forest image is way up here at the very top. And I wanted to create this like deep in the forest type feel. And so I placed the forest way up here at the very top and then I have the house way down here. So it just has that more of a spooky deep in the forest type look to it. And so anyway, we have this image of the eye and we also have the house. Now the house is in broad daylight. It's just lunchtime or it's noontime and I'm going to show you how to take this old house during the broad daylight and turn it into nighttime and we're going to have these light beams shooting out of the house and if you look closely you can see that they are reflecting off the grass down here and this is really high resolution so I can zoom in real close here and show you this. So basically just going from day to night. And if you're wondering how I went full screen, I just click on this little button right here, full screen mode, or you can press the F key on the keyboard and that'll go into full screen mode. And you can actually toggle back and forth between all the screen modes by pressing the F key. So let's go ahead and move on with this project. So to start the project, come up here to File and go to New. And for the width, I want you to enter in 2816 and the height 4200. And then resolution 300 dpi because we're going to be working with some high, high resolution images. Now for those of you that would like to create a standard movie poster size or change the settings here so it's a real movie poster size, which they normally call a one sheet, then the dimensions for that would be uh, 27 by 41. So most of the movie posters that we see all over the place are usually this size right here. Or created at, most of them are created at this size. And so if you're looking to go the full real scale of the movie poster, then go ahead and enter that number in 2741. But, you know, for this tutorial, I don't want to quite go that large because I, I think that if once you understand the, t the uh, techniques on how we do some of the effects in this tutorial, then you can go ahead and just make the movie poster any size you want. So for me, we're just going to go with 2816 by 4200, and I just rounded it off the best I could. You can just make that 2815 if you want. 300 DPI for the resolution. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now the first thing we're going to do is make a black background. I'm going to select the paint bucket tool, change the foreground color to black. I'm going to press the D key on the keyboard and I'm going to go ahead and just click and color that background in. Let's go ahead and double click on that background layer to unlock that and I'm just going to name it background once more because if I don't it'll name it layer one so we don't want that. We want to have that named as the background. Next, we'll need to bring in some of the images that we will be using for this movie poster. Let's go over to the Adobe Bridge, and let's look over here to see what we have. Well, we have the poster, the eye, and we also have the house. Well, let's go ahead and start with the uh, forest here. So let's go ahead and double click on that, bring that into Photoshop, then select the Move tool, click on this stock image here, click and drag it over to the movie poster project file. And now let's position this towards the top 
And what I think we'll do here is just resize this down a little bit. Now, this image here is also taken during the day. But we want this poster to be nice and spooky. So we're going to go ahead and just make everything that's daytime, nighttime. I'm going to press the Enter key on the keyboard, and we're going to confirm that. So in order to go from daytime to nighttime, let's create an image adjustment. And before I do that, though, I'm just going to name this Forest. Then I'm going to hold down the Alt key, which is the Option key on the Mac. And I'm going to come down to the bottom of the Layers palette right here. Click right here on this little circle icon while you hold down that key. And just select Levels. And then put a little check in this checkbox right here. Bring the mouse pointer right over to this middle gray slider right here. And that will allow you to adjust the midtones of this photo. So just come over here and just move this gray slider to the right. And that'll look like it almost takes it from daytime to nighttime, just like that. You don't have to go too far. We're just going to add a little bit for now. But that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click OK. So let's create a layer mask. Come down to the bottom of the Layers palette. Click this button right here, Add Layer Mask. And you should see a little white window right next to the thumbnail there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here so we can see what's going on. So after you've created that layer mask, come right over to the toolbar, and I want you to select the brush tool. And then for the foreground color, let's just go ahead and change that to black by pressing D and X on the keyboard. That will change that to black real quick. Then over on the image, let's increase the master diameter of this brush by just right-clicking on the image and turn that up pretty high. Now the hardness, we don't want any hardness at all, so just keep that at zero. This looks pretty good. And let's make sure that, that that layer mask there is activated. And I want you to come over to the image. Let me zoom in real quick. And we're going to paint on this layer mask. And what that'll do is darken the very bottom of this, just like this. See, because we don't really want the grass in with this whole thing, because we want to just see the trees. We want to create that illusion like the trees are this tall. And this is like the trees start down at the bottom and then they're just so tall and now this is the very top of the trees up here. I'm just going to go ahead and, and fill this in. So I'm darkening the bottom of this photo here. So we've completed that part. Now we're going to go ahead and do a lot of color overlays to make the all the color blend in. Because if you look over on the completed poster, you can see that the color is quite different than it is from the one that we're working on. Well, that's okay, because all that is is a photo filter that I'm going to show you how to create later on. So let's go back to this image, and now we're going to go on to the house. So let's go back into the Adobe Bridge, and then just over here where the house is. Now, in order to find a lot of these images, you may need to browse by thumbnail. I would recommend using the file browser or the Adobe Bridge because the names of the files are, you know, they have different numbers and, and so they're a little bit harder to find. And I need to include the numbers on all these photos so I can keep track of, you know, who the photographer is, where the photo came from, and all those sorts of things. So, okay, so we have it opened up in Photoshop now. Before we drag the house image over to the poster, though, I want you to come back over to the project image here. And I want to make sure that the topmost layer is selected. That's because as soon as we drag the house image over to the poster image, it's going to place it on a layer above the layer that is selected. Watch. I'll just come over here and select the Move tool. I'll click and drag this over. And as soon as I see that little symbol, that little plus symbol, I'm going to go ahead and just release the mouse. And now it's over on this image. And you can see it places it just above the levels an image adjustment that we just used a minute ago. I'm going to double click on this layer and we're going to call it house. And let's move the house down the image here a little bit. All right, now for the next step, what we're going to do is completely remove the sky behind this house, the sky and the mountain, because this is going to allow us to just remove that, all that daytime stuff, and we're going to make it nighttime. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the image here. Now, we don't have to be very, very neat when we're doing this uh, because this is going to be a pretty dark image. And, you know, we, we might not be able to see all our mistakes. And so, you know, I'm going to grab the pen tool here and just make a quick path 
around this house. And I can do this fairly quickly because we do have a lot of straight edges. It makes it a lot easier. And I'm pressing the space bar on the keyboard to get the hand tool so I can navigate around while I use the pin tool. And there, I'm just going to get to the very edge of this roof here. Might even just do that over again. Down the house, right about here. And we're also going to go straight across this land, this field. I'll click at this side of the image. Then, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. I can just come outside right here and click around and then reconnect it right here. You see that? Boom. And that'll make it a complete path. So then all I have to do is just right click in this path, make it a selection right here, and just zero for radius and put a check mark right in this box with the anti-aliased and then go ahead and click OK. And you will see that become a selection. What we're going to do is create a layer mask. So just over here on the layers palette, click right here on the add layer mask button and that'll make the background go away. But I'm going to show you a really cool technique that you're just going to love and you're probably going to use it on all your projects now, I'll bet you. Every time we cut something out or we crop things in Photoshop, sometimes we don't quite get all the way around the edges or we don't get close enough and we don't have to get really close. We can always fudge it from now on. You know why? Because I'm going to show you a little trick. And you can use this if you have a layer mask on the same layer, okay? So make sure that layer mask is selected. It should be by default after you've created the, the new layer mask. And I want you to come up here to Filter, down here to Other, and I want you to select Minimum right here. And this is the fun part. All we're going to do is increase the radius of this minimum filter and that will get rid of the outline around the house. Now wh what's happening here is that the minimum filter is making that mask a lot smaller. And so while it's doing this though, we get the benefit because instead of going in there with a selection and uh, subtracting, contracting the selection by two pixels and versus selection, press delete. We don't have to do any of that anymore. Just come into the minimum filter on that mask and set the radius here to either one or two or three or four pixels, depending on how much outline you have around your cutout. And you can make it go away, just like this. I'll just put four, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And let's zoom out of the image here. That's looking great. And you can see this is what it was before. And now this is after. I'm going to just come over here and we want to get back some of the background here behind the house. So I'm going to come over to image adjustments and brightness and contrast and see if I can brighten this channel or I'm sorry, this, this uh, mask a little bit. Let me go ahead and back up a little bit because I think I moved just a little bit too fast. In order to get that background to come back just a little bit, because you don't want to completely eliminate the background behind this house, we want to bring just a little bit back. Click on the house mask, come over here to image adjustments, and over here to brightness and contrast, and you can brighten a mask. Yes, you can. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> but you can come in here and just turn up the brightness, and you'll slowly see that come back. You see that? So we can start to see the background again. That's pretty cool, because we don't want to completely eliminate that, but we just wanted to make it a lot darker than the front of the house will be. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now what we're going to do is take this house from daytime to nighttime. So let's go over here on the Layers palette. I want you to hold down the Control key on the keyboard. That's the Command key on the Mac, and I want you to re-click on this layer mask and you'll see the the house load there then I want you to create another adjustment layer let's hold down alt click on the new adjustment layer icon right here and I'll select levels put a check in this box right here click OK 
And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the sky with the house. All we have to do is just come down here to the bottom of the levels control and just click on this white slider and move that to the left. And now basically you're just making the sun go down. Now you can go all the way down, but that's that's pretty dark. But we're going to move it to just about right here. That looks pretty good. Let's click OK and check it out. Let's go ahead and start on the light beams. And those are what you see right here. Because it's dark outside and there's a big, huge, bright light inside. Really, this is supposed to be a, a sci-fi type thing. It could be an extraterrestrial spaceship inside the house or something like that. Or, or a science project is, is what it's supposed to be. And it's just so bright. It's the beams, you can see the beams of light just shooting out of the windows. And you can see the reflection on the grass. And I'm totally like, you, you can tell, I'm just totally into this, like all the drama type stuff that you can do in Photoshop. And 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 if we don't have a, a photo of something like this, well, we can always just create it in Photoshop. And that's what's so great about this program. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select the zoom tool and we're going to zoom just a little bit closer to this house. So I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to call this Windows. And then I'm going to go ahead and just make the layer adjustment invisible for the house for now. And that way we can see the windows here. Okay. All we have to do over here on the toolbar, let's select that polygonal lasso. And I'm just going to make selections right where the windows are. And I, I don't even think this old house really has any windows, but we're going to go ahead and create some. After you've created one selection, you can add another selection by just holding down the uh, shift key on the keyboard. And I'm getting this little arrow next to my, that should go away in just a second. There we go. So yeah, if you hold down shift, you can make another selection while retaining the other selection that you've created or the first selection. So I'm going to come down here and let's just select these windows. There we go. And I have one more to do. Down here, over here, and up. Okay, great. Now all we have to do is fill these selections in with the color that we're going to use for the light that's inside the house. Now this color is pretty easy to make because all it is is just yellow. That <laughs> I found that yellow is just, just creates the best result for this. Let's come over here to the toolbar, click on the foreground. I want you to select yellow right here on the color picker. And after you've adjusted this to yellow, if you want to make sure you have the correct yellow, just click on only web safe colors. And then that'll give you less colors to work with. And if you click on yellow right here, you'll see it, it'll be on the very top right, right here. Okay. And then go ahead and click okay. And then just come over here. Well, before I do that, I think I'll make sure I have the Windows layer activated first. And then I'll come over here to Edit, down here to Fill, and then I'll just select the foreground color to fill with from the contents, use foreground color, and then I'll click OK. And there you go. I'll come up here to Select and Deselect. And let's go ahead and zoom out here. And then what I'll do is make this image adjustment layer here that's above the house. I'll turn that on and there you go. So we can see that we have these really bright lights inside the house and what we need to do now is create the light beams. And let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing, let's go ahead and make a new layer and we can call this, uh, let's go ahead and call this beams. Now to create the beams it's really not very difficult to do because all we use is the polygonal lasso. Okay. And so all I have to do is just come in here and I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see what's going on. There we go. And I'm going to start on this first. Well, I'll start on this one over here, this last one. And I'm going to want to position that polygonal right there 
on the corner of the last window, the very top left corner, click, then I'll just drag out. And we want to sort of imagine this beam, how beams just almost like when they shoot out of a window, they sort of, they widen a little bit. It seems like that anyway, but click and then drag it out and kind of go up a little bit, just at an angle, just slightly like this. And then click and then drag down, click again, and then just return back to the window. But this time I want you to return back to the lower left corner right here. Then up and then reconnect the selection just like that. Okay, cool. Now let's fill that selection in with the beam color that we're going to use. And the beam color is also very easy to pick out. Come over to the foreground color, click on that, bring up the color picker. Then with the color picker, I'm going to select the only web safe colors. That way, again, we just have less colors to work with. And I want you to bring this slider down here to the orange color. You see that? We're switching from yellow to orange. And guess what? You've already got the color. So after you see that, go ahead and click OK. Then over here on the toolbar, we'll select the paint bucket. And then I'll just click inside that selection to fill that in. Select, deselect. Now, to get an idea on how this is going to look, let's just come over to the beams layer and lower the opacity just a little bit. And now we can sort of get an idea on what it's going to look like when the light is just shining out of the windows. And I can just readjust this beam if I need to, just to line it up to that window just a little bit better. And so let's go ahead and create another beam. And I think what I'm going to do is just rename this layer here to beam one, because we're going to create three beams of light. I'll create a new layer and let's call this beam two. I'll select the polygonal lasso tool and we're just going to click on top of this one and bring out. Now I'm going to make this go up or well, well really, I'm just going to make this basically go in the same direction as the other beam, but it'll be a little bit higher just because this window is a little bit closer to us. So in that case, I'm going to make it a little bit wider, just a little bit taller. And then I'll return back to the bottom left corner of that window. I'm going to click and then right up to the top. And then over here on the toolbar, let's select the paint bucket and fill that in. And I'll just select that. And now let's turn down the opacity of that. Now, we're not really sure exactly what the opacities are going to be for these beams just yet. I'm just playing around here. It's just so you can kind of get an idea on the progress that we're doing. Let's create another new layer. I'll double click and we're going to call that beam three. And now for beam three, let's select the poly polygonal lasso here. I'm going to click at the very top of this window and just go up here at an angle and down. And this is just going to be the widest beam so far. And I'll click at the bottom left corner of this window and move that up and connect the selection. There we go. I'll select the paint bucket and let's go ahead and fill that in. Deselect and lower the opacity. And it looks like I'll just move that beam in just a little bit closer to the window. There we go. Perfect. And so I'll lower that opacity just a little bit more. Okay. Now there's a few things that are missing here. And we're going to go ahead and do those in just a moment. But before I move on, I'm going to show you something really cool. You may or may not have tried this already or even knew about it, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, include it on the video. I'm going to combine these three beam layers together in their own separate group. Then what I'm going to do is apply a layer mask to the group. Let me go ahead and show you. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, if you're not using CS2 you're really, and you're using an earlier version, what I want you to do is link all these layers together. So in Photoshop CS and earlier, you have the link well that's just next to the little eyeball icon. I want you to add the Beam 2 and, B, and Beam one, 1 layer here together so you have Beam 3, Beam 2, and Beam 1 all linked together. Now for those of you that are in Photoshop CS2, just hold down the Shift key 
make sure beam 3 is selected, hold down the shift key and then click on beam 1 and that will select all three of those layers. Then I want you to come over to the very top we're going to go into the layers options so come up to the little arrow at the very top right of the layers palette right here and I want you to come down here to new group from layers okay go ahead and select that and we'll just call it beam group and I'll go ahead and press enter and now all those those three layers are in their own separate group Look at that, and I can click on this little arrow and that will expand the group so we can see what's inside of it. Okay, pretty cool. But the greatest thing about this is that we're gonna create a layer mask on this beam group right here. So let's go ahead down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the add layer mask and that'll place the mask right next to the group folder. Let's come over here to the toolbar and select the gradient tool because what we're going to do is make this these beams of light fade away I mean fade out from they're going to come out of the house as bright as possible and then they're just going to slowly fade out let's look on the uh, our completed project here do you see the how the light just sort of fades off it just drops off after a little while I mean it's pretty bright at the beginning right here but as you go along the light just starts to fade away. So that's the type of effect that we're going to create right now. And we're going to be doing it on this layer mask. The layer mask is white, so what we need to do is use black. Let's press DNX on the keyboard to make the foreground color black. I'm going to hold down shift and then bring that gradient crosshair just outside of the of the image here and I want you to click and drag in a gradient now we, we may have to do this a few times just to get it right but I'm gonna do it right now real quick so you can see what what I'm talking about you see that let's go ahead and undo that and I'm gonna bring that just a little bit closer click and drag the gradient I'm holding down the shift key now if I don't hold down the shift key with the gradient tool then it's you know it's really flexible like this and I want to make sure that I'm going perfectly horizontal so I'm just going to hold down the shift and that'll lock it in and then I'll go ahead and release look at that now that just looks so much better than it did before now it's starting to look more realistic now what we can do is adjust is adjust the opacities of those beams to really make them look real and let's go over to that group and expand that and then I'll go down here and let's just tweak these opacities just a little bit because I don't want those beams to collide too much because they really don't need to be that bright. Let me go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit closer because if you're the video is a little bit small you can I'll zoom in so you can see this. Also if you notice that the beams the edges of the beams are very defined it's a very sharp edge I found that if I blur or soften those edges just a tiny bit it looks much better watch I'll, I'll click on beam one better yet I'll think well I'll just make these beam three and beam two invisible well what, let's just start with beam three for right now let's come up here to filter down here to blur and Gaussian blur and this is just a very slight blur very slight you don't want to crank this thing all the way up here because you know it's just not gonna look right you can do that but if you want those really cool sharp beams then you're gonna to have to keep it way to keep that radius number way down here then what I'll do is just go ahead and click OK so we're gonna use the 1.2 I'm gonna click OK and so we can apply the same value to all the other beams so I'll click on beam 2 go up here to filter Gaussian blur and you'll see that the Gaussian blur is the first thing on the menu here at the very top and all we have to do is select that and that'll apply the exact same setting that we used the last time we used the Gaussian blur so I'll click on beam one make that visible go up to filter Gaussian blur right here great and that little that very subtle adjustment there I feel that just makes a big difference so let's check it out look at that
And there's one other thing that we need to do to make all this look more real than it already does. We're going to create this light on the grass. And if we look over on the completed poster, you can see the light is coming out of the house. The grass there is sort of lighting up a little bit just from because the lights are so bright that we're, you know, the outside of the house is, is getting light as well. So we're going to go ahead and create that effect right there. And before I do that, I've been looking at the image here and I noticed that those beams could probably be just a little bit more dramatic. Let me show you something real quick. If we select or link all these beam layers together, we could actually distort them. And what I mean by that is come over here to edit, transform, and select distort. And that'll give us the ability to widen the beams if we want to, we don't have to. But I can come in here and widen those up a little bit. You see, they were a little bit narrow, but I can just come over here and make those much more dramatic like that. Look at that. And then I'll go over here and just click on a little check box or a little check mark at the top, or I can press the enter key on the keyboard to confirm that. Look at that. Okay. So, you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is, is kind of like freestyle. A lot of it's improvised. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I have to like experiment just like everybody else. So, but I think I like this much better. And hopefully you can pick up little tips along the way. And so now let's create that reflection off the grass there. I'm going to create a new layer and let's call that grass light. There we go. And the grass light is, is pretty easy to make. All we have to do is select the brush tool and create a soft brush. So we'll right click on the image and make sure the hardness is all the way down. And I'll just set this brush size here a little bit larger. And then I'll just come in here with the paintbrush and I'll paint down like this. <laughs> now that looks pretty wild. I'm just going to go ahead and make that brush size just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to experiment. I mean, I don't really know if this brush size is going to work for me, but I want to cover the grass. I mean, you almost have to imagine the light, the light beams are, or the grass is picking up the, the brightness of the beams. That's really what's happening here. And they're not going to be this bright, obviously. I mean, we're going to go back and, and adjust the, the brightness of it. I can use the eraser and also come back in here and trim that lighting a little bit, just like that. All right, now let's go over to the grass light layer and turn down the opacity. Look at that. And that's how we can get that effect. Now what we can do, we can also come up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we can blur that as well. Whiting it, it's making it a little bit wider, but we can blur the paint if, you know, because if we can't get the brush soft enough, then we can just go ahead and blur it later or after we've painted the, the light down there. Okay, excellent, there you go. Now we have that reflection. And I can also see it looks like the, the mountain in the back there is just a little bit bright. I'm gonna hold down Control and select the layer mask of this house, select the transparency of that. And what I think I'll do is inverse that selection, click on the house layer, Let's select levels. And then I'll just darken that background just a little bit more, just so we could barely see the mountain there. There. And let's go ahead and zoom out and look at our work. That's looking pretty hot. Yeah, it looks like the top there, the sky at the very top is still a little bit bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on the levels for that image adjustment and make that just a little bit darker, just so it'll blend in more with the house because it looks like it's just a little bit too bright for nighttime. Great. Okay, so what, what can we do next? Well, we can add some text or we can add in the eyeball. Let's go over to the Adobe Bridge 
And let's go ahead and open up this image of this eye. I'll go ahead and double click on that and let's get that into Photoshop. All right, great. Let's go ahead and up here to select and select all. And then over here to edit, down here to copy. And then I'll just go ahead and close this eye image. And next what I'll do is click on the topmost layer and then I'll come over here to edit and paste and I'll just position that where I think I like it. All I have to do is create a layer mask on that layer and I'll just name that for right now I and then I'll click on that layer mask then I'll select the brush tool and I'll make a good size brush here about 800 pixels or so and then I'll just come in here and paint on that mask to make that eye just make it look like it's just appearing in the middle of the night. All right, then what I'll do is probably make an adjustment layer for this layer here. So I'll hold down Alt, make a new adjustment layer, and let's use levels again. And then I'll move this white slider, the white arrow here, over to the left to make that darker. Look at that. And I can adjust these brightness controls as well. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And it looks like to me I could probably do a little bit better job on that masking. So I'm going to turn up the brush here. Then I'm just going to darken the edges of that just a little bit more, just like that. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Now for the next step, we're going to create a photo filter. And this is going to help us adjust the color and overlay a color over the entire image and make everything blend in just a little bit better. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to come right over to the layers palette and click on the adjustment layer button. You don't have to hold down alt, but what I'm going to do is select this option right here, photo filter. We can apply this overall warming filter to the image. Look at that. And we can use a custom color here, a custom orange color if we'd like. We, you know, we have presets, warming filter presets that we can use. We can make it like a cooling filter, a warming filter. We have orange and red and all these other colors that we can use. But I think what I'm going to do for this project is just use an orange here and I'll just brighten it up a little bit. There we go. And it just makes everything a little bit more warmer and blends everything in together. So, so far, let's go ahead and zoom into the image and get a little bit closer look at our work. And so we can see what we've done so far. I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard. And by doing that, that'll make the palettes and the toolbar disappear. And now we can zoom in and look at the image. Check this out. And I'll think I'll even go even larger. And this is looking pretty hot. And it looks, still looks a little bit bright. It looks like we almost have a moon shining over on this side of the house or something like that, which is okay. You know, I could make the house darker if I wanted to, but I think, you know, we pretty much get the point here on what's going on. And we have the eye, and then we have the sky here in the back. So let's just continue the project. If you'd like to go ahead and continue, what I'm going to do is start adding the text onto the movie poster. All right, now let's go ahead and continue and add the text onto the movie poster. So first of all, I'm going to go over here to the toolbar, click on the foreground, and change that to white, and then click OK. Then I'll select the Type tool. I'm going to click on the image, and let's type out the title of the movie, Occupants. All right, and if you look over at other movie posters, you'll notice that a lot of them are all caps, but they capitalize or they make that first letter larger than the rest of the word, and that helps it to make it look more like a main title compared to all the other text on the cover. And so there's an idea right there. I looked at a lot of movie posters before I started to create the ones for this DVD, and I picked up little tiny things like that along with a lot of other things, and I wanted to go just go ahead and share those with you. So. I'm going to go ahead and make the O on occupants a little bit larger. I'm going to grab the character palette, which is up here on the palette well, and I'm just going to increase the point size a little bit. 
and just make that a little bit larger. If I click on the T right next to the drop down menu, right here, little icon, if I click, you'll, you'll see the little hand tool with a couple little arrows next to it. But if I click and drag either to the left or the right, I can resize that first letter. Look at that. And you can select individual letters or you can select the whole word. It doesn't really matter. But it's kind of a variable resize adjustment there. And, and it's kind of nice because you can see the difference on the fly as it's actually happening. So I'll go ahead and adjust that and then press enter as soon as I like it. And let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit closer. And I'll go ahead and put this character palette right back up on the palette well. Okay, so you can see that I've made that first letter larger and I can just zoom out and we want that title to be much larger and hold down shift and alt and that'll be shift and option on the Mac and then I'll just come down to the corner click on a corner and move the mouse and just basically make this text larger so it'll fit across the poster a little bit better just like this and now because I've made that text larger what I'm gonna do is decrease the letter spacing okay because most of the time in typography, when we make the letters larger, then sometimes we need to decrease the letter spacing. Now, when letters are smaller, then we need to make the letter spacing, or we need to increase the letter spacing. So I'm going to come over here to the character palette and just bring that over here so we can see it. And right here, you'll find the tracking, and I can just increase that, or actually decrease it, sorry, down to negative 25 may even go just negative 10 so it's not too harsh there that looks pretty good now I'm going to create the the and select that and we don't need it that big so I'm just going to go ahead and just use the drop down menu for the point size until I like it and I'll set the you see and here's another typography technique right here but you can see that by using the capital o or the larger O here compared to the rest of the word, when we incorporate other words, it's easier now because we can set those words into little cozy corners. I'm just going to make that letter spacing on that just a little bit larger because you can see since it's a smaller word that now we need to increase the letter spacing. So there's a tip right there. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and just click down here and we'll add some more text. They are watching you. I'll press enter and I'll double click on that type layer to select the entire type layer. And then I'll lower the point size down just a little bit. And I'll set this text all the way to the end, all the way to the end of the title of the movie. And it's a good idea to line things up. You can see that I'm lining that up right to the very end of that S. Because in design, you should always make sure something is aligned with something. Always. And so the more you do that, then the better your layout will look. And of course, we can add this stuff at the top. We can add some more text on the bottom. And if you see on the final poster here, we have some text down here on the side and this is just one type layer which is sort of like a little slogan or, a little, or not a slogan but a little tagline for the movie a little little blurb or a little little hint text the re the way to create that I'll show you right now go ahead and select the type tool and I'll show you how to create that text I mean and and this is just typing a lot of a lot of you guys already know how to create type in Photoshop but I'm just going to go ahead and show you anyway let me grab the text from the other movie poster. Then what I'll do is click and let's get that new type layer created there. And I'll go ahead and paste the text in. Now to get that letter or get, to get that line spacing, this is actually the letting. Okay? And that is right here. If you hover the mouse over the icon here, it'll say set the letting. And letting, they call it letting because years ago 
they actually used to use real lead in between the letters or setting the type they would actually use real lead and so that's why they call it leading and it's just I guess stuck the whole time so that is how I got that line spacing there look at that and I'll just go ahead and get the move tool Re regarding the alignment you can see that to make sure that you're aligning the text with other objects and other text on the image you can come up here to view and turn rulers on then what that allow you to do is to drag out a guide so you have some sort of guide to use to make sure that everything is aligning properly you see that and then you can just go ahead and turn off the guides under extras you can just go to show and uncheck the guides and that'll make that go away all right so if you'd like to learn how to create movie credits go to the movie credits video on this dvd and i'll show you how to do that and i'll teach you how to create a credit block that is seen on the bottom of almost every movie poster ever made and there's a few more there's a few steps involved in it so i went ahead and created a separate tutorial separate video just for that and go ahead and check that out so and now you know how to create movie posters in Photoshop and how to create some killer light beams coming out of the, the house there. So we'll see you guys on the next video.